All right, welcome back. It's another episode of Mush Love from the Mush Room. What up? It's your boy, Danny Camp. It's me, Jer. I guess that's what you can call me. I don't even know what I go by on this, but uh, got an exciting episode. Haven't really talked to Dan one-on-one in uh, probably about a month. We had some guest episodes, which are coming up. Excited for you guys to see those. But I wanted to bring it back to uh, putting everything on Danny. So <laughs> I've been... Uh, I've been just thinking a lot more about set and setting uh, for when I microdose or when I macrodose. And I like to like light my incense. I kind of like to uh, be in like not a bright room. I like to keep it a little dark or have like the neon lights is obviously always cool. Uh, but something I'd like to hear your input on since you're uh, Mr. Music 2022 going to be a breakout year. Very got true. Sold My Soul coming out. We got, uh, I forget the other names, but I know Sold My Soul is probably my favorite one. Um, but I want to hear from you. What are your favorite uh, musicians and or songs to listen to on a microdose or a macrodose? And then um, I guess it'd be nice to know if you could maybe explain a little bit of why you think that they're good songs for uh, microdosing or macrodosing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a topic I could talk about all day. Um, That's what I, I thought. I actually made a, a video about this exact topic um, on TikTok. So let me just pull that up for, for reference real quick, make sure. Um, but yeah, no. So I do think that music for me is probably one of the biggest things of um, of set and setting and all that. Um, it, it's one thing, even if I'm not microdosing in general, if I'm having a terrible morning and I put on some great music, it completely will yank me out of my yeah. my moodiness and stuff. Um and for me, when I'm microdosing in particular, it depends. It depends always on the mood, but the the one general consistent thing I like is just very chill, kind of mid tempo, mm. low low tempo stuff like that. That is normally not too lyrically dominant. Um, I'm a huge fan of instrumental music. Obviously, I'm a music producer, so you know I enjoy just listening to to wordless music a lot of the time i feel like there's a cool way of it stimulating my brain um sometimes lyrics too many lyrics it like distracts me or i can't like zone into something um, do you think just with that being said do you think it's um beneficial to listen to someone that you do know so that you're not like intently listening to the words like a song you've heard before or do you think it wouldn't matter if you're listening to something for like the first time that you don't really recognize I mean, it depends. If you're just having like a, a, a chill day and you want to explore and find new music, that's definitely valuable. Um, I, I have like a playlist that I made. Maybe we could even share it with the audience. I made a Spotify playlist of uh, a lot of good chill instrumental stuff. Um, we'll have the editor um, throw some stuff in and, uh, and give some links to some songs or the ones you mentioned. We'll, we'll cut them in so people can listen. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends. Like there's days where I'm like, there's Spotify has discover weekly where it'll just give you 30 new songs every week. So sometimes let's say if it's a Monday morning and I got a fresh discover weekly, I'll play that. But uh, normally when I'm microdosing and I'm trying to focus, like if I'm meditating, trying to get work done, trying to read, I have like a given playlist that I just know is, is good or like a given type of thing. So some artists that I would uh, recommend from that, um, Tycho is like a constant I think even when when you would always be at my house like I would just if, if there was nothing else playing I use that as like background music there's a lot of um like Gregorian frequencies and healing frequencies in the music uh it's like very very how do you spell that uh Tycho T-Y-C-H-O um there's a playlist that I, um that I really like on YouTube Tycho 432 hertz so everything is tuned to 432 instead of the standard tuning of 440 um, I've been reading actually, um, supposedly like, uh, uh, auditory therapy or like sound healing is going to make a breakout in 2022. People are saying like, that's going to be one of the big things in wellness, um, which I think, uh, alludes to like the different megahertz and, the uh, shocker bowls or the sound bowl, Tibetan sound bowls, uh, going at diff resonating at different megahertz to, for healing or for love or for whatever it might be. Yeah, I think that's why I'm super glad to be a music producer. Obviously, like I'm on my like, I want to be an artist and I want to set the world on fire and all that. And none of that's going to change ever. But um, I, I do love the aspect of getting more into sound healing. Me and uh, mm -hmm. Teresa, uh, my roommate, we're talking about, uh, you know, 
when she comes back from Guatemala, we want to start up some workshops in Austin where we do like creativity workshops, sound healing workshops, uh, and we can start allowing people to kind of connect with their inner child by like, you know, just playing music and being in a space that is safe and free to help facilitate that. So I really agree that I think this year people are realizing how important music is. Um, you, I mean, you see that we're in an audio revolution right now. Like every person walking down the street has their Air, AirPods in. That I, like, you know, it, it went for like from the early 2000s into like 2015. It was like video. Everything was video, YouTube, visuals. But now people are realizing, oh, I can be on, you know, working out at the gym and still gaining information at the same time with the power of audio. So for multitasking potential, it's great. For healing, it's great. There's so many ways. But um, did, but yeah. did you see there's a video? Um. I don't know if it was recent, but I saw it recently of uh, Kanye West kind of uh, alluding to like um, mainstream songs. Demonic having... frequencies and devil music. So it's crazy. No, that's not what I was going to say. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you obviously know. <laughs> yeah. I, um, the funny thing is, bro, someone asked me uh, when, when <laughs> Matt's album came out, someone asked, uh, we went on a, a podcast for, for music people. And, uh, nice. The person asked music like, people, you guys want to come on Much Love the Mushroom? Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. We already know. We'll uh, we'll bring some awareness to your your brand. But now someone asked like, what's your take? Uh, I think they asked the question was like Kanye or another artist. They were like, you know, what wh who would you choose or something like that. And I said um, the one thing that I I respect about Kanye, but also that it changed the entire direction of music was he like heartbreaks and 808s like what the 808 was i mean it was around before kanye but he popularized the 808 which is like that bass that's in everything now like every trap song that has that deep boomy bass like it's mm -hmm. there that's the 808 instrument that just got distorted and modified over time to become more and more aggressive but when you think about human nature and you think about frequency the only time you hear that subwoofer type deep low rumbling sound it's, it's not something you hear in nature so if you think about evolutionary biology and we're cavemen standing around a fire the only time you would hear that sound would be like an earthquake or like thunder or all these things that would evoke a fight or flight response within us that makes our heart beat faster and makes us like feel like we want to move whether it's to run or whether it's to like dance or various things so the reason that Kanye realized oh let's use this is because these low harmonics are something that naturally elicit uh, a scared almost response in the human evolutionary biology in our brain so to me it's really fascinating is in it, <laughs> yeah exactly right I I'm glad you're explaining because I, I think I heard everything you just said, but I didn't understand what the way that they're saying. I didn't really understand it. Um, that makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's wild. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely wild. Well, music it makes a lot of sense. Music literally can hack our <clears throat> hack our whole system. Like it, it's wild right. how responsive we are to frequency. I, I think uh, just to pause you for a sec. Um, yeah. I feel like most people and maybe I'm just saying most people because anecdotally it's for me, but. I, I feel like it's easy to recognize when music makes you calm, but you don't think of the alternative. And it's like when you listen to soothing, I'm listening to soothing jazz right now. Right. Um, I think actually the channel is called like soothing jazz, but you know, like that it's going to chill you out. It's not going to make you too whatever. You don't think too often of like what's making me angry. Um, Cause like who wants to, listen to music to be angry really but it seems like a lot of people do well you ever seen that video of um dmx with the like the, the crowd of like a million people the crowd just goes on forever and ever. like that type of stuff like that aggressive and then the crowd like it's yeah. so polarizing yeah so yeah. It, it's definitely something you don't realize and as a producer it's something i've become more and more conscious of because our body's heart rate naturally aligns itself with the BPM of the music we're listening to. That's why if you're jogging and you're listening to like techno or like drum and bass, your heart is going to be pounding versus. Yeah. You... <laughs> and it's super hard to, to pace yourself when you listen to music. Like that's why a lot of people running long races don't because you naturally go faster when a, a good song comes on yep. and that's not good for pacing and for your endurance. But um, but when you hear a uh, fast song, you just start running faster. It's just yeah. natural. Yeah. So all that stuff I find super fascinating, the science of, of sound <laughs> healing and just how our bodies respond to it. I'm a huge fiend for like psychology as well. So that's just super fascinating to me to blend the art of music psychology. They all are interrelated, but, 
Um, but yeah, so long story short, um, I think, I think, what are we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) I think music is super important to setting intention in your day, regardless of microdosing or not. And I do think that, uh, listening to the right music will help you get into a certain mind state. Um, so that's why I pick non lyrical music. A lot of the time it detracts from my focus. I start thinking about what they're saying rather than thinking about what I'm doing. Um, so artists in, in the non, non verbal genre that I like that are chill, um, I have a list here. So some of them, uh, we got Emancipator. Other than, mm. So we, I said Tycho first. Tycho is like one of my top. Like I love Tycho. Please check out their stuff. Incredible. Uh, then Emancipator. He <coughs> is like a multi-instrumentalist prodigy from like the early like 2000s that still makes music. Um, a lot of hip hop has sampled Emancipator from... Yeah, I've definitely heard of them before. I for some reason I thought they were a little bit more um hard. Do they have like some hard stuff too or uh they have like a little bit more like electronic stuff that can get a little bit more aggressive, but like like there's um whole albums of just like chill downbeat stuff uh um, nice. from Emancipator. Then one you might know FKJ. He he like FKJ a lot. Love FKJ. French? Yeah, f- uh it stands for French Kiwi Juice, actually, FKJ. F- yeah, um, so, yeah, what's up? Um, so yeah, he's amazing. Uh, there's an artist, Charisma, K-O-R-E-S-M-A, who is kind of like more low-key and more modern, also great. And then um, my favorite band of all time, actually, uh, the XX from the UK. There's their producer, right. Jane. Jamie XX is um <coughs> is a genius like what he hmm. does what he does with sound so um J- Jamie XX and the band the XX as a whole they make really amazing uh chill sensual kind of music that, it, that there, there's lyrics in the XX stuff but it's so like humming and chill that it doesn't really detra- uh, distract me so if I had to give five off top those are those are great um, those are some great ones I'd say those are pretty good I would like to add one um that i've been listening to a bit is east forest have you heard of east forest i have i haven't gotten deep but i have heard of them yeah that's who i listen to a, a bit about and then um i've actually heard him recommend it a lot and then i think he's like made albums specifically for mushrooms like for a trip which is just interesting like uh his intention making the song is like thinking of psychedelics or having psychedelics in mind so mm. um that's pretty cool i wouldn't be surprised if some of the artists you mentioned uh do that as well but i think yeah. like uh east forest has whole albums about it. it's pretty cool um do you have a favorite song that you like to uh turn on when you're uh about to get tripping or take a journey mike and dose um so again i'll normally just put on that tyco 432 hertz hour playlist but uh, by the xx um there's this one song it's their one of their more popular songs uh there's a song intro by the xx that um that was in project x so a lot of people know it from that um Mm. but no that song is like it's one of those songs that i'll listen to if i'm having like a really bad anxiety or like borderline a panic attack that will ground me immediately like it's just i put on intro and i'll leave it on loop and it'll just bring me back to ground zero um crystallized is another one by the xx that is on that same type of time so uh, those are two songs that i really really enjoy to just set, set things into motion do you ever uh, listen to yourself? I feel like that could get a little bit um, like you'd get in your head maybe too much. Like, is that my voice sounds like or is like um, with things that I've already put out? It doesn't like I'm I'm able to look at them objectively now. Stuff I'm working on is where like I'm like cling. I'm like, oh, like it's not perfect. I'm still like mm-hmm. I, I'm very manic That's and neurotic right. with because it's not it's not out into the world. But um I listened to Catch Twenty Two, my my EP, all the way through one time when I was like actually like taking a little bit more than a microdose, like in between like a heavy dose and a micro, like probably like a gram or something like that, gram and a half. And uh, mm-hmm. I remember listening to it with like fresh ears, and it actually was good because it was like pretty recent after I had released the project and was still like judging it and in that like uh, it's not per it's not. And then I remember listening to it and just kind of like surrendering to what I had created without a state of judgment and it really gave me a different perspective of like oh wait like this is how people hear my music and like you don't have to be so hard on yourself like this is actually good and you worked hard and sure you'll get better and there's room for improvement but like I remember like yeah mushrooms have a great way of resetting that default mode network and all the judgment of like clinging to this like this is my baby this is my project has to be like once it was Mm -hmm. out and I could just trip and listen it was like oh wow like you you did a thing and I'm proud of you so yeah That was, that was a cool experience for sure. 
That's what's up. That's good shit. Well, that's about all I have to say uh, for today. Do you have any closing thoughts or? Um, nah, I would just say, you know, people check out some of the music, uh, we, we mentioned and also, you know, um, consider, consider now that the, what I brought up with the Kanye thing and the, the devil music and all that stuff, uh, maybe we can do a little thought, thought exercise when you guys are listening to music over the next week, maybe just kind of be a little bit more intentional and, and ask yourself, how is this making me feel? And is my heart rate elevating because of this? Am I, am I happier? Am I, do I feel aggressive now? So make that a fun little challenge. Just kind of, uh, look inward when you're listening to music and see how it's affecting you. And I think that's, that's pretty much all, but yeah, hope everyone has an amazing week we got two great uh guest podcasts coming if you haven't seen them already by the time this is out so uh yeah just sending much love to the whole community much love from the mushroom we're out peace peace